So with all the process videos I've been doing lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to start the website and where it's supposed to be started in their account, my account. <laughs> that's a good question. So that's what I'm gonna cover today. But before I dive into that, if we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin. I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace educator and graphic designer slash web designer. <laughs> and I've been in this industry for a long time, so I can't wait to dive into this with you today. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about the two options, right? I have services for custom projects and I also have services for VIP days, design days, whatever you wanna call those. And those are two completely different paths. They take up different amounts of space on my calendar and on my client calendar. And so I have two different processes for that. I'll start with the custom projects because that's gonna be most relevant to this conversation. <laughs> But basically custom projects are started from scratch, ideally. If they are truly custom, they are started from scratch. And yes, you could argue that Squarespace doesn't let you start from scratch, but that's not technically true. I mean, you still have the platform as the base, as the builder, but you can absolutely 100% start a website from scratch on Squarespace with blank pages, with blank settings, basically, uh, just the defaults, you put in the color palette, you pick all the fonts, all of the things, right? So that's the way that I start my custom two-week projects. For those two-week projects, I always start... Luna, no, bed. Bed. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. For those custom projects, I always start those in my Squarespace account. And there's a reason for that. Basically, it's a worldwide phenomenon that all service providers at some point in their career have been left high and dry, basically. We've given them the work and they've taken it and run with it without paying for the work. So to protect ourselves, we have to have some sort of leverage there. And this is the way that we do that. But for Squarespace particularly, it's actually a perk for the client to allow us to do this because as a Circle member, which you can apply for after you've been invited to up to, I think it's three, last I checked, three different sites, once you've hit that three mark, and that includes your own website. So any paid plan website, not a free trial. The website does have to be live, active on a paid subscription, but as long as you're on three of them, you can apply. Once you're a Circle member, that membership gives you the ability to pass along a 20% discount to the client when they buy their first year subscription. So if I start the Squarespace site in my account, when it's time to hand it off to the client, their first bill will be cheaper. <laughs> not only that, but they actually get a six month free trial in that too. So at the end of the two week project, if they're not ready to launch it on that final day, they have up to six months <laughs> to get their shit together before they're ready to launch, which is fantastic because the normal everyday Joe that signs up for a free trial in Squarespace gets two weeks. That is a massive difference. So those two perks, I think, kind of level out the fact that they don't have full control over their website until they've paid in full. So let me talk about that. So that's the reason why I start it in my account. I can create the website in my account I've literally got 50 plus of them in my account as I speak. <laughs> That's just how things roll around here these days. So aside from the perks that they get and all of that, when do I actually pass it off? What does that look like? That gives me the leverage until we've hit that final milestone. The site is done. The revisions are done. They've paid in full. I wait until that point before we do the launch call. So I get on the call with them. I walk them through the whole process of me and inviting them as a contributor. Once they've accepted the permissions, then I can actually transfer ownership to the person I just invited as a contributor. And that by default will make me the admin contributor and them the owner. So it flip flops our positions, right? I created the account and so I was the owner, but when I transferred ownership, I then became the admin that I had assigned to them. So I'm transferring everything about that whole situation. So that happens pretty instantaneously, actually. It's very quick, very easy. 
From that point, they can decide when or if they want to remove my permissions, remove me as a contributor. Those are actually two separate options from their permissions menu. And I can also remove myself if I want. I can't change my permissions level. So if, for example, they gave me billing permissions for some reason or design only permissions, I couldn't make that admin permissions right? Because I don't have control over the level of permissions that I receive, but I can remove myself. And so that's just good to keep in mind and also to communicate with your clients so that they know what's up. (laughs) They can remove your access at any point, which is why it's very important not to hand over that access until they've actually paid for the service in full. Okay, so let's now talk about VIP days, and then I will jump into what it actually looks like when I start this in my account. (laughs) So for VIP days, because they move so fast, it really doesn't make sense to start from scratch. And also most of the people that want a design day or a VIP day have a shit list ready that they want you to tackle. And that means there are problems that currently exist, which means a website already exists. So typically speaking, 90% of the VIP days that I've done in the past, they've already existed. I have not needed to create them from scratch, although I definitely have. (laughs) Those were very long VIP days. Do not recommend for most people, especially if you're on the greener side of the level. (laughs) The intermediate to advanced level people can definitely do that in a day, but you probably should work up to it. I digress. So for VIPs, make sure you get their payment in full before you get permissions to the website. The same reason as the custom projects, you lose the leverage if the payment is not done. And VIPs just move too fast to be able to take that on, make the changes, and then not get the payment. Even if it's 50-50 split, if they book and pay 50% when they book that spot, take the remaining 50% before you start the work, not at the end of the day, because at any point they can remove your permissions when they decide that you're done and leave you high and dry. (laughs) Not to say that every client is like that, but also my boundaries are pretty clear. And that's the same reason why I insist on getting the payment in full before I start that work, because it just moves too quickly to do anything otherwise. All right, so that is kind of the lowdown on how I approach this from a tactical perspective. Now let's dive into my account and take a look at what the actual custom project looks like. Really briefly, if you want a detailed overview, make sure you go check out this video where I actually go into a deep dive into my blank template. And yes, I do start with my own blank template. (laughs) Got your interest beat? Let's go take a look. Before we dive in, the reason why I start with my own blank template and I created this one from scratch the way that I always set up all the templates for all the clients, (laughs) the reason why I did this is because this means the settings are the way that I always want them to be. The color palettes in the color themes are the way that I always start them. The main pages are already there. They are blank and ready for me to dive in. The code that is my go-to starter kit of code is already installed. All of the plugins that I like to use, especially for people that are going to be content marketing like myself, it's all already installed. And my private resource hub that I pass off to clients, it's all already in there. So I don't have to create it from scratch, which means I'm bypassing the amount of admin time that I would be investing into this project if I were starting truly from scratch and manually putting that all in. So it's still a custom template because I still started this particular one from scratch and I am just customizing it even further. So this is the base level blank custom template that I start all my custom projects with. Now, how do I do that? Since I have so many accounts in my account or websites in my account, I have tags for all of these as a circle member. This is a feature that we get in our dashboard. So I can filter my list of websites down to the tag template. This is it right here. So if I click on that, It will open that template and this is what it looks like. So you can see there's really nothing in here. There's a footer kind of already set with the format that I typically use for the legalese. There is a placeholder for a couple of things and everything else is on the back end. So this is a blank slate for me to get started in. But let me backtrack for a minute. 
to get started, of course, we don't want to start editing this. We want to make a copy of it first. So what you do is you hover over the ellipsis icon on that website. And yes, this is a trial. It maintains itself as a trial. And when it needs to be renewed, I just contact Squarespace and I say, hey, I have this thing that needs to be renewed. Can you renew it? And they say, yes, it takes 60-ish seconds. <laughs> Once you've gotten a real person, doesn't take long at all. So I never have to pay for it, just in case you're wondering. So from that menu, you just scroll down, you click on duplicate website, it will make a copy, and then you can dive into the copy. It's an exact replica. It has all of the base code and everything that I put in there, and that saves so much time. So now that you know how to duplicate it, let's actually take a look at the inside. So I have a different video that dives into literally every single detail of this. <laughs> So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. But here's the high level overview. Inside this template, we've got pages already created for most of the higher level, like everybody is going to need it kind of page. There's nothing on them, but they already exist. And that means that the page name is already there. The URL slug is already there. Maybe the SEO title is already there very basic, right? There's nothing on here. Even if I click onto it, the first section is started. This was back when I had Classic Editor. So I can choose to upgrade it if I want to start with Fluid Engine. And there we go. I've already got a text block in place. It's easy to get started. The actual sections for the content are not there, but that gives me creative freedom to start it from scratch, which allows me to make every website truly custom to each individual client so they don't tend to look alike. So that's the main pages about services, contact, home, FAQs. You can see they're all they're all more or less blank except for the FAQs. I've already got the accordion drop down stuck in there. So for the collection pages, because there can be a lot of them depending on who I'm working with, I already have a bunch of them kind of pre-started in here. So I have one for a blog, one for a portfolio, one for opt-ins and ads, because yes, you can use blog collections for that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video on that too. <laughs> so go check that out. If you want to know nine plus different ways, you can use blog collections in Squarespace. There's also a blog, sorry, there's also a shop collection. And then and also you can use blog for disclaimers and testimonials. So I already have those in place too. And if I click on any of those, they're just a standard Squarespace blog. The only difference is if I needed code installed, for example, on the blog page, I pre-installed the universal filter plugin. So it's already there and ready for me to style it based on this particular client, whoever I'm working with. Same thing for the, the case studies, there might be custom code installed in this one too. So that's the collections folder. Underneath that, I have a folder full of website settings and related shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that includes the private resource hub, which is a whole bunch of links that I give them when I offboard the client. And I have a separate video on that if you want to dive into that further. And then I also have a media kit, and this is getting more popular as we continue to network ourselves, put ourselves on podcasts and guest spots and do featured videos on other people's YouTube channels like I've done. <laughs> and it's really handy to have this as a quick and easy way to send people when you are going to be a guest or featured on some other platform, right? So this is kind of pre-filled out because it's easier for me to keep it kind of the same. This is not a design feature. Uh, it just needs to have kind of a regimented list of shit. So this is the way that I can plug that in really easily for them. I also have a collection for the legalese and I have blank pages ready to put policies in for all of these. I can just go through and delete the ones that are not relevant to whatever client. And no, do not assume that the privacy policy and cookie policy are the ones that are irrelevant. In fact, those are the most relevant, so don't go and delete those. But they might not, for example, need the accessibility statement, the disclaimers, the affiliations, the terms and conditions, blah, 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 for their particular business. But the fact that they already exist means that it's easier for me to go in and delete pages that they don't need rather than creating 10 of them that they do. <laughs> I also have a pre-existing error 404. And yes, that is a pretty standardized format for that page because it's not, again, not a featured page that they can show off to their main uh, audience. <laughs> it's one of those things that you discover by accident because you were specifically not looking for it. It does tend to be the same. 
However, that said, uh, I've ended up changing this up a lot depending on the client and their type of personality. So again, this is still just a baseline pre-structured thing as a jumping off point, basically. Same thing for the Instagram bio link. This is kind of the link tree style page that I give them. So this will link up to their blog or their testimonials, their store, whatever collection they may or may not have, their events page. And um, I can link their logo here. There's a image block that's ready to go. I've pre-hidden the header and the footer on this page and all I have to do is link up the buttons and basically it's ready to go. I also have a thank you page with a image block and a pre-existing text block that's ready to go. And I also have my template style guide in place because I like to never go half-ass on anything. <laughs> I also have a sandbox here and that's just for me to plug in a bunch of saved sections if there's anything they want to be able to edit after the fact, but I never know what that's going to be until after I've done the website. So that is also blank. So that's a high level overview of what is inside my blank template. That also includes all of the settings the way that I like them to be, the folders in the asset library, the way that I like to organize them, all of the things. <laughs> So if all that was interesting to you, you definitely need to go check out those other two videos where I dive into my private resources hub, the way that I offboard my clients and empower them to maintain and update their own websites without me. <laughs> because I just don't have the capacity to do that for everybody that I come across, even if I really am not ready to let the client go, because I do love all of my clients. <laughs> I feel really lucky in that. And the other video is specifically to take a deep dive into why I start my projects with this custom template, what's inside, take a major peek into all the details, why they are there, and why I love it and how it actually works. So make sure you go check those out next. And that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.